Hey everybody, Ian here from Mobile Suit World of Xeon. Located in the capital of the Principality, we are by far the largest mobile suit dealer in all of Side 3 with the best deals every day. 60 months, 0% financing on this beautiful MS-09R Rickdom. Get down here right away, take a test drive, you'll fall in love, and you could be taking home your bright, shiny new mobile suit to do with as you please. Oh boy, guys, look at that. I was... Uh, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, okay. I posted a pic of uh, some of my backlog on on a Facebook group or, or Thray. And, uh, yeah, a lot of people were clamoring. Like, hey, let me build your Rick Dom. Can I buy your Rick Dom? How much for your Rick Dom? Oh, yeah, I gotta have that Rick Dom. Yeah, I mean, they're not easy to get. Uh, the kit is, oh, 1999. Yep, that girl's old. That's they built this kit when we were all worrying our computers were gonna crash from the Y two K bug. Um, so yeah, this is this is I've been wanting one of these for a while, and I found one that wasn't a horrendous amount of money on uh, on the eBay's, Fleabay, whatever you want to call. Ah, oh, come on, Nest, go in there. Look at this. I love when these come. I mean, this is like frameable. You could just you could just put this in. I might just do that. I think I'm going to do that. I've got to, yeah, I've got to decorate my, uh, my, my office at my real office at work at my physical actual place of employment. I haven't been there in a while. Um, yeah, thanks everybody. Uh, yeah, this is cool. Um, so we're going to get that out of the way. We're going to do our little unboxing here. It's a very old kit, very big basic parts. Um, but yeah, everyone was freaking out about the Rick Dom. I mean, come on. Uh, rightly so. We all, we all, we all love the Doms, Rick Doms, other variants of that. Um, crotch parts, ball joints, um, yoga. This is not gonna do. Uh, these, these are not. I mean, besides, I mean, <laughs> look at those cankles. I love cankles. You love cankles. We all love cankles in our mobile suits. Nothing like, nothing like a chunky, chunky little ankle cankle area. Um, but yeah, got some bright red. That's pretty cool. And, uh, we've hit my first favorite thing of any mobile suit kit is a multicolored runner. We've got a yellow naughty stick here for to give the spanking when they, uh, the, when the feddies talk up during class. Um, this is a parochial school that this Rick Dom graduated from. We got some articulated fingers. Um, it, yeah, it kind of feels like almost polycap typish material. We'll see how those work. They'll probably be a pain in the butt. Uh, clear bits. Um, there's a little chest scatter thing. Lens gun. Uh, we were... I might paint that. I got some clears. I got all the clears. Oh, look at that beautiful gel dome. Oh, it's nice. We got some other stickers there. Some dry rubs. Put those to the side. Oh, my garbage can is almost full. Ah, here's our cankle parts. I mean, like, I, I love the Japanese. They have they have such cool style with things. They're like, uh, I don't, let's see, it's 1979 when Mobile Suit Gundam came out. It's still the 70s. They're like, ah, we need a robot with bell-bottom jeans. That's what these look like. Frickin' bell-bottoms. For a while, they started making a quasi-comeback, and then there was those Jinko skater jeans. Those were, oh, God, I owned a pair of those. Those were, those were pretty rough. We got some black... Feet bits and skirting. Let's see here. Oh, come on. Oh, baby. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Yeah, you other brothers can't deny. Oh, cushy. Ah, big gun. Uh, looks like arm or leg pieces for internal structure. Little backpack action there. Oh, I got a nice pile of pile of parts forming over here. Uh, let's see here. A little more unboxy-boxy. Uh, okay, some more. Not a lot, but some polycaps. I, I think there's, yeah, there's there's definitely more polycaps in here. Some more foot bits. There we go. A little crotchy parts. Bottom of the footsies. Ah, that's the difference here. So, this is based on the Dom kit. That's the Dom's... No. Actually, no, I think you use both of these. 
I don't know if there's any, there's probably some leftover Dom parts in here. I'm guessing, just a guess. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I don't care if I'm wrong. Some of you might care if I'm wrong, but it makes it all that much more fun. Here's some more internal structure parts and thingies. I think those, yeah, back of the back of the bell bottoms are gonna have some rocket pods. Don't set your jeans on fire, kids. Let's see here. Okay. More armor bits, nice and purpley. And I didn't want the, the Char version. I mean, there's just so many. Char, uh, Char had everything. Char had more mobile suits than I had excuses for my wife. Ah, oh, here we go. There's the mother load of polycaps from 1999. Oh, yeah. 1998. Sorry, it was based on the Dom. And, oh, mamacita, look at the size of that pea shooter. Yeah, you could launch potatoes out of this easily. Just a little uh, air pressure. And we've got our old school manual. Let's go through that briefly. Lots of cheese, Louise. Wish I knew Japanese. Oh, it rhymed. Uh, uh, you know, big bazooka, bigger beam bazooka. Nice. Uh, his his naughty stick. Right on the candy stick. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Okay. Instructions. Some nice completed pictures. Everything usual. The normal fare. And we've got that, and this, and that, and then the snappy of the head and the body and the waist and the arms and the legs, and then, boom! Oh yeah, look at that big booty, big bell bottoms covering them cankles. Zero articulation, not a whole lot. Some articulation, but uh, yeah, that's, that's that for now. This is beautiful. I'm definitely going to frame that somewhere. Ah, it's going to be nice. That raises morale in the office with the other nerds. We're in there nerding all day, and you can walk to go to the bathroom and get some coffee, and you walk past a beautifully framed Rick Dom. Ah, just makes you smile. Okay, let's get this. This is a big box. This is a... On the larger side of Master Grade boxes of normal older kits. I mean, come on, we got the MG Extreme Unicorn with like the 55th unicorn they've made with the, the lights and the 200 and something dollar price tag. Insanity. All right, I'm gonna get this giant pile somewhat organized and start building and we'll be back with some progress. Okay, everyone, uh, be dialing. Please stand by. All right, a little progress update. So look, we've got, we've got the head done. Probably one of the... I love the head on the Dom. It's just... It's just badass. It's cool. Um, it's more betterer. Um, we got our shoulders done. So I'm really... I'm pleased. I'm, I'm giving... Good news here, guys. If you if you are careful with your nipping, minimal, minimal... Uh, you know, the little white stress nub marks when you cut them off? The black was like... I'm like, oh, this is going to be bad. It's actually not that bad. If you're doing the double snip, you're okay. Uh, purple? Eh, yeah, not not too bad, you know, with the snip marks on the purple. Focus, you son of a... Yeah, they're not... They're not horrible. Um, that could use maybe a little sanding. I'm gonna try to do zero, um... Zero manicure sanding on this kit, if possible. Um, and then we're gonna... Every build, we're gonna... I'm gonna kinda highlight a different procedure. Just FYI. Um, so you might wanna watch, but... Holy crap, to build this thing, and I mean, I've dealt with this before in other kits, it seems like worse on this kit. Um, it's not a problem, it's just you are shuffling parts runners like a blackjack dealer on a busy Saturday night. I mean, we've got A tree, F tree, D, A, J, O, K, J, K, M, K, J, it's F, I, I, D, C, A, E, it's all, I mean, it's insanity. For one page, you're going to touch, like, you're going to have to pick up and figure out, and, like, more than half the runners in the kit for just this one page. I just thought that was a little crazy, because I know some of the newer kits are really cool. They kind of organize the build phases 
into the runners, which, damn, I mean, seems like a logical idea to make things a little more user-friendly. Um, I think the Perfect Grade Unleashed RX-78 2, which I was late on the pre-order, um, I'm sort of a procrastinator, and I missed out on the December batch. I'm kind of glad I missed on the December batch, because I did see not a lot, but the ones who did show quality control issues with some of the parts. Um, so maybe the second batch, they'll hear those complaints, see all the orders for replacement parts runners. I'll just say runners, guys. I'm sorry. I give up. Trees, sprues, I mean, whatever. Um, so, yeah, I'll get mine pff, April. It'll probably be, like, May before the thing ships out. I pre-ordered from a, an unusual source. I don't want to give my source out, do I? Do I want to give my source out? Because this is a place that not a lot of Gundam people possibly go to. I know about it because I order... I love all sorts of toys and and cool stuff. And I'll do. I'll show you guys. I got stuff. I mean, I sold a ton of stuff when we moved down to Georgia. Um, but those weren't my, like, prized possessions. I just kept my, like, most prized favorite things. Um, BigBadToyStore.com. Not the cheapest. Not the cheapest. Usually competitive, sometimes more expensive. Sometimes something's on sale. Surprise, surprise. I think they have the MGEX Unicorn uh, below MSRP by a good 20 or $30. Um, something like that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you're just shuffling through these things, back and forth and back and forth. But either way, the build's going smoothly. I like it. Um, I'm starting on these hands and these fingers. There is zero, just FYI, there's nothing to indicate left or right. There is the Japanese character for what I believe to be uh, left... Uh, can we see? Yeah. Left and right. So with the fingers, I noticed um, we have these two symbols, and they match up with these two symbols on the shoulders. So I have determined what is, I think, left and right. And then again, we have uh, left and right. And I think that just means manipulator or hand in Japanese. Slow, it's like Rosetta Stone for people who don't want to buy Rosetta Stone. Like, sooner or later, we'll be able to read at least basic uh, traffic signs in in Tokyo. We'll be like, no no left turn. So we'll see that shape, and we'll see like an X maybe. Or they probably just use arrows like we do. They're like, yeah, if we give someone a tourist driver's license. Yeah, yeah, we got... Let's not cause accidents. Okay, back to work. A um, little slow going. Uh, it's an old kit, but it's really nice. I mean, it's really cool. I like it. I don't care if there's polycaps everywhere. I don't care if there's little fingers you have to build. I mean, the fingers. You're building fingers. We don't get that a lot. It's more of a perfect grade type thing. So, okay, I'll shut up. I'll be back. Um, go grab a beer and play with your dog. And, uh, no. Yeah, I, you, if you were here hanging out with me, you'd be doing that. Because someone needs to play with my dogs. Because I'm sick and damn tired of it. They are really high energy animals. Ah, BRB guys. I said, "Whoa, who? What is it good for? Absolutely nothing." That's like a theme song they should have played for Gundam. Okay, so we're back in 1999, 98, and as you can see here, all the little verniers, verniers. Thrust cones, what it? They're verniers, apparently. Um, red, 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 red. And if this is a master grade of today, they would have red inserts. But these do not. And I normally don't paint, I've never painted a kit other than clear coat. Um, so I'm just, this is driving me nuts because I'm actually going to like look under the butt and look at the backpack. Um, the ones under the bell bottoms, no one gives a crap. You're not going to see these things almost ever. So here we go. We got some focus to me. Come on. Oh my god. It's March. My birthday's in April. Okay, this is uh XF7 flat red from Tamiya. It's a uh, it's pretty close to to the the red on this kit. Close enough. Close enough for government work. Um so what we're going to do 
is uh, we're, we're just gonna get a little come on there goes the air compressor open up this is an adjustable throw uh, Tamiya spray works ultra fine so it lets you get pretty damn tactical surgical however you want to say it either way um, so we're gonna come on we're just gonna spray the inside of these guys red And we masked them off with some Tamiya fine masking tape. We're gonna shove them in our little pincushion block. But yeah, this is uh We just want these we want these red. I mean why not? Why wouldn't we want them red? And you can use regular X7, uh, which is like a gloss red. Um, but in this scenario, I'm using the flat because I usually flat clear kits anyway. And actually, if you do flat and then you gloss coat it, it doesn't matter. I think my airbrush is a little dirty. Either way. Um, it's very hard to paint in front of a camera because it's kind of in front of my face. Either way, we're going to paint the rest of these. We're going to unmask them. If we get any overspray um, beyond where we masked at all, we could just sand it down or use some thinner and wipe it off. I want these. I want these verniers red. And then in the middle there, that should be black. But that's easy enough to deal with afterwards with a Gundam marker or a paint marker or a paint brush and a little bit of black paint. It's no big deal, you know? And I'm using the fine tip uh, airbrush and I'm using it on a fairly restricted throw setting so we don't just douse this thing in paint. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's gonna, it's really gonna add to the kit. I would not be painting these if I didn't think it was an egregious violation to not have little red plastic inserts are for these uh, these thrust nozzles and these two are for the backpack these are the ones you're really gonna see so I mean we really yeah there we go get a good amount of red going There we go. Um, yeah, that should be good. Let's hang that sucker up to dry. I, you know, I noticed this when I was building the leg thrusters uh, for the bell bottoms, uh, or or the cankle boosters, as we're gonna fondly call them now. Cankle boosters. Um, I just saw that on the uh, like I showed you those inserts in the manual, those pages. And then I looked around at the red parts runner, and I was like, uh, where are my little nozzle inserts? I mean, hell, I've built a high grade or two that had those inserts. Maybe. I'm probably lying. I've built master grades that had the inserts, and I was used to it. And when I saw no inserts for this, I went, uh, 1998, what are you going to do? Either way. Okay, all of our verniers, verniers, that's a weird name. Um, honestly, nozzles, whatever. Aren't they usually nozzles? Like a rocket nozzle? I don't know. Um, we're gonna clean our airbrush, as all good boys and girls do after using it. Let's see. I put just about the right amount of paint in it because I barely have any paint left. Um, but, of course, we will attempt this is a small jar and i oh if you're wondering what the t is on this jar it means i've thinned the paint 
for airbrush use. And that formula is uh, available if you watch Andy's Hobby Headquarters. Andy's HHQ. Uh, Andy's Hobby Headquarters, great guy, amazing. I mean, if you want to learn how to airbrush, and you want to learn how to use airbrushes and thinners and how to do all that good stuff, definitely, definitely follow Andy. He is fantastic. Now we're going to get this clean. Let's not bother showing you guys this. I'm sure the tank guys don't mind it, but maybe the Gundam people do. Um, either way, I, I'm not doing tutorials on how to airbrush and how to clean airbrushes and how to thin paints because Andy does it better and Andy doesn't cuss at all. Whereas I will drop the occasional F-bomb or at least say son of a bitch or oh shit. Uh, <laughs> there we go. The video now has met its quota for adult words. Either way. Um, those are painted. I'm going to unmask them and, 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 you know, finish off, sand around, you know, take off any excess paint I need to. Otherwise, we've got arms built. Uh, we've got the head built. We've got the legs mostly completed. Well, I don't know. I had, you know, two-thirds. Uh, not even. One, half completed. We still got to put on all the other leg armor, build the feet. Uh, and then the torso and the waist section are next, uh, backpack and all that good stuff, and then big-ass weapons. So, we will be back. This is going to be a long video, I guess. BRB. Holy mother of God. <clears throat> I have a customer <clears throat> in downtown Atlanta who uh, has, a, you know, one of their angel investors or whatever, and it's Shaquille O'Neal. And I've seen an actual Shaquille O'Neal sneaker. Seriously, if, if if this Rick Dom wore Nikes, they'd be like a size 28. These freaking feet are ginormous. I mean, holy. But we're going we're gonna to go up. Oh, yeah. Satisfying little click. There we go. See, this is why we didn't paint the thrusters, verniers, whatever, in the legs. It's because you're, you're really... Ah, ooh, yeah. That's a nice click. We got some legs. We got some arms. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, the individually articulating fingers. No semi immature man can avoid that. But I'll also, I do. Pinkies up for drinking your tea! We're civilized murderers over here in Xeon. Yes, there we go. Sorry, freedom fighters. Um, whatever the PC term is right now. So we got a head, we got arms, and we got legs. Um, so now we got a. Build, build the, the middle. Build, build where his uh, mommy daddy button goes. Okay, we'll be back. But damn, those are some big feet. Holy God! Yeah. All right. Well, BRB. Well, I was gonna do a tutorial on uh, uh, panel lining uh, these things. Uh, other people have done it already. There's no damn panel lines on this. There's these little divots. So you just dab. You know, some of that Tamiya panel line accent color in there in the knee the knee joints those are done panel lined uh, half of the uh, mega beam super B beam mega super bega bazooka I gotta do this other half um, and we're gonna start clearing it I did a test shot with semi gloss it's it's still too shiny I don't like shiny kits uh, it's just a leftover for me building uh, model armor. I, I don't like shiny. So, more more of the uh, Mr. Super Clear flat UV cut stuff. Um, so, I'm going to finish panel lining this beam bazooka, and then uh, we will clear it, and then reveal. Yes. Okay, BRB. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I definitely need to get like one of those little... Gundam turntables like all the cool kids have um, but here we go um, she's a bit of a statue I mean there's not a whole lot of posability I mean I did the panel lining where I could uh, this guy I colored him behind it with a silver paint pen and then I spray I painted the lens itself with clear yellow uh, that has a nice gel dome on the super bazooka I mean it's impressive. It looks good. 
And yes, I'm always going to spray everything flat. Oh, here we go. And we can see the uh, the fruits of our labors with the red. It could have come out a little bit better. But it's better than not being red on the inside, I think, at least. But yeah, it's pretty pretty cool. I already scratched the shoulder up with the bazooka, with the beam bazooka. But uh, yeah, um, the hands, I think I would honestly prefer the two-piece type swappable hands. I mean, you could do middle fingers and pinkies up and all sorts of fun things. But as far as actually posing and using these things, yeah, that's about it. Uh, it, I mean, they're not great. And we got our other, got our other little bazooka here. We panel lined. Little, little runny runny. Um, yeah, I mean, it's okay. It's fine. You know, it's like a more normal type thing. This yeah. son of a... That's what... Yeah. That's what this model is known for. That is the Rick Dom's signature gigantic gun. It is like the biggest, this is officially the <clears throat> biggest Gundam model gun I've built yet. I'm sure there's bigger. I know there's bigger. They got the Deep Striker and they got the, what, oh God, who's texting me? Oh, my little brother moved into his own apartment and uh, he apparently ordered the wrong model of printer. It's like, I don't know. Okay. The whole family, I'm I'm the, the, the CIO of the family, and they should not be making tech purchases without consulting with me, but it doesn't always work. Particularly with my younger brother, who should know what he's doing. But no, I say there's a $200 color laser Samsung printer, copier, scanner that I got. It works fine. He goes and buys something for $600. And then he's like, I don't think it came with toner. Oh my god. Okay. Long story short. Um, yeah. That's why Amazon has returns. Thank goodness for his wallet. But yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Look at that. That's pretty spiffy. I gotta admit. Alright. Well. <clears throat> yeah. I guess, uh, I guess I'm, uh, oh. whoever can guess what that is wins a prize. I mean, not a real prize, just kind of a, a faux prize. Mm. Who knows, maybe I'll do a giveaway with something I hate. I mean, something I don't need. I mean, something I don't want. I mean, maybe I'll just do a giveaway of something. Who knows, one of these days. I have all of 300 silly subscribers. Sorry, guys, you're not silly. But you know what I mean. It's kind of, like, not really a giveaway-level subscriber base here. Uh, either way, there you go. There's the Rick Dom. Everybody was dying to see it. People have been dying to build it. People are dying to buy one. People just can't get their hands on them. They're very hard to get these days. They are coming out with a MS-09 Dom one-year war color version. And it's not a Rick Dom. It is a Dom. So it's got the little... It's got the little booster backpack, the smaller one, and something different with the butt flap, I think. Um, and I don't know if it has, it doesn't have this giant gun. It's got this guy, and it's got the, uh, Rakuten Bazooka or something like that that has, like, the little blast shield. That, um, I saw one build of somebody that already has it. Like, they must be on the other side of the Pacific Ocean. And, uh, it's, like, weird colors and stuff. It's, like, a lot of weird pastel pinks and stuff going on. It's not a... Sh it's not a, a shark custom. It's not a shark color. It's a one-year war version, it says. But, um, I thought it was going to be like a Dom 1.5. I thought it, the one-year war version was going to be kind of like the Dwodge, where it's like a 1.5. It's got, like, updated uh, hip joints and things. Um, and maybe it's got, like, more panel lines all over it. Because, like, the origin version of things, they have extra panel lines. So, like, I ordered a Master Grade Zaku 2, just the green one. But I ordered... Uh, the one year war version because I looked at it and it, it's definitely that 2.0 plus extra panel lines on the armor uh, panels as far as I could tell um, we'll see when it comes in you know it, uh, pre order is I don't know April, May w whenever that shows up um, but yeah sooner or later 
who knows, I'm assuming or guessing or hoping they will come out with a proper 2.0 Dom, Rick Dom, or whatever, I guess. But I don't know if it really needs it. I mean, this looks anime correct. This thing looks like the TV show. So I'm happy with it. Not a lot of panel lines to deal with. I got two decals on there, you know. I don't like putting a lot of decals on if I can help it. It's just, they don't necessarily need the decals. They look great without them. So yeah, that's it. End of the video. <laughs> Go get lost. I'll see you next time.